chairpersons of the sidewalk fair were David and Irene Taylor. Well, this is Bill Hamlet, co-chairman of the 250th Anniversary Committee, and we're now seeing the arts and crafts and sidewalk fair, which was held on the green of the Congregational Church on a very lovely Saturday afternoon. You can see by the activity that's being shown, what a tremendous success it was. Townspeople turned out by the hundreds. Arts and craftsmen were on location doing their particular thing. There were items for sale. There's uh, Marge Peaky doing her artwork. Marge, incidentally, was the one who designed the 250th anniversary seal. Now we see Maurice Merritt with his wood sculptures, which were particularly outstanding. Here's one of our younger visitors. This is some uh, arts and crafts displays in the form of uh, uh, Custom-made earrings. There's Ronnie Ludwig from the Centennial Bells. This is a particularly fascinating event in that the man is making uh, chessmen out of hand-blown glass, as you see displayed here right before your eyes. was a lady from, I believe, uh, Minden, who painted on felt, uh, velvet, pardon me. Toy Parade, sponsored by the Halston Women's Club, held in June. We were scheduled to have this outdoors, but New England weather was unpredictable. It rained, so we came indoors. Uh, the selectmen acted as judges for this occasion. Uh, the children dressed in various categories of floats. Uh, we had walkers, potpourri, which was an assortment of costumes. One little fellow's evil can uh, They paraded around, led by the Holliston fife and drum. Some very imaginative costumes. We also had a bicycle category. Children look forward to this because it's their very 
own special day. There are many, many prizes awarded in the various categories, first and second prizes for each category. And there were refreshments at the end for the children. We did have a bicycle drawing, a boy's bicycle and a girl's bicycle. Anxious faces. I think this little fellow was too young. He ran from 3 to 12 years old, I believe. parents were as anxious as the children. Hi, I'm Fred Claflin. I'm Bill McGuire from the Holliston Brothers of the Brush. This is a beer judging contest held on a lovely day in the Congregational Church lawn. There's Maurice Merritt and Russ Hatch strumming the banjos to gather the crowd together. Always a good time listening to Maurice and Russ. It was another beautiful day, as most of our events of the year were, well attended by many people. There's Bill McGuire, just went off the scene. One of the judges, Edmund, the hairdresser in town. And the other gentleman is the barber from Menden, who was the official barber of the Menden Brothers of the Brush. There's an old timer talking there to Charlie Kurtz. There's a contestant signing up for the event. There's a beautiful beard. Took a lot of time and effort on that one. And here we see the barber shop. There's the high sheriff of the Centennial Bells, giving one of the brothers a facsimile of a shave. You'll notice the old time shaving mug and the brushes used, none of your modern methods. Looks like she's getting ready to cut his throat there. portion of the audience are quite intrigued with the razor. This is a scan of the crowd and the contestants. There's our Lou Polteri from the Holliston News Store. There's another anticipation. There's Phil Robshaw. Looks like the judges are having a rough time figuring out who's got the best beard. There's families of men 
friends of members. There's the navel of the year just for fine. Everybody's waiting now in anticipation for the winner. generation without the beards. There's Dick Chartrand. There's Mr. Siraki getting a award there. There are the contestants are lined up. Notice the big hand on the brother you're getting. Dick Lamro stepping forward for his award. And there's the Championship beard, our own Bill McGuire. Looks like Santa Claus there in that picture with a little gray and with the light. Muster on Saturday, July 27, 74. Byron Robshaw was the other co chairman. There was a total company participation of hand tubs. There was 19 coming from all over New England, uh, representing all the New England states, and including Rhinebeck, New York, was about the furthest uh, hand tub. There was eight miniature hand tubs. And there was a total of 93 fire trucks in the parade itself. This is the beginning of the parade. This is Charlie Harper and his antique car club, which he is the, I believe, the president of. This is the Holliston, East Holliston Fire Department color guard. <clears throat> the um, Marshals in the parade were Steve Honey and Bert Gates. Bill Honey and Bert Gates. This is our own hand tub from Holliston, Hydrant Company number three. Which incidentally, if anybody would like to join Hydrant three, you do not have to be a member of the fire department. a lot of people to pull these machines. They weigh about 2,000 pounds. Hydrant 3 has a tradition of running the hand tub past the judges as it was done in the old uh, days when they used these pieces of apparatus to pump and put out fires with it. Shriners Band from Aleppo Temple in Boston. Brothers of the Brush Float. Sorry, spraying the crowd. I might add that this was the biggest fireman's muster in the East Coast in 1974. We had quite a few comments from all over New England. This is Leon Allen in a miniature fire truck. There's a fireman to be. I, 
might add that all in the winter months, all of these men and boys work on these hand tubs throughout New England and the amount of hours put into them so that they can compete in competition is astronomical. Unfortunately, when a pot does break, it's almost an impossibility to find one. Therefore, they have to machine one or rely on a craftsman in their own area. This was the Barry Brothers of the Brush, came down from Barry to take part in the parade. They also were, also were celebrating their centennial of the town. I believe it was their 200th anniversary. It's New Market, New Hampshire, the DA Taggart. They date back to the league was formed in 1889 and many of these names on the machines go back to the original towns or areas throughout Massachusetts. These are the clowns from the Boston Edison Company. They're not to be confused with the people who set the fuel adjustment clause. three fire trucks that came from all over New England and it was the largest uh, parade with trucks from any of the New England musters that have gone on in past years. How long did the parade last, Frank? Uh, approximately about two hours. Here is the Ocos from Marblehead, Mass. Look at the beef up there, which they'll need all of it later on in the day. The reason they cut the name to Ocos is nobody, including myself, could pronounce it. There is Smokey the Bear. Here you are looking down on the field where all of the hand tubs have assembled and the object of the muster is that these towns travel almost every Saturday throughout New England to pump the machines for the last solid drop of water. Now here's a picture of the foreman and he's up top on the machine waiting for the wind conditions to be exactly right. Now he drops the flag and the nozzle crew, which you'll see later, and the men start to pump the machine. There's the nozzle crew. How long do they have to pump, Frank? They have a time limit of 15 minutes. And they can pump as many times in that 15 minutes as they can get in. They're, they're competing for $1,000 in prize money split up into two categories, 
what we call an A class and a B class. The A class is six inches and under. The A class is over six inches on your piston size on the machine. This is the Hancock VFA from Ashburn Air Mass. This machine is the oldest machine in the league. I believe it's 1851. How many men on each team, Frank, to pump? It varies on the small machines from 40 to 60, and on the bigger machines, they can take upwards of 100, 112. And to pump one of these machines, you're actually only pumping time is about 20 odd seconds. And when you get done, you can just have all to you have all to do to breathe. It looks an awful lot easier than what it actually is. There's a man that had fallen off. Oh, take it back, <laughs> woman's lip. All right, now we're down on the field, and you can see more or less the nozzle crew. They are holding back pressures of upwards of 250 pounds. Here are some of the judges, Bert Simons from Marblehead on the right. What they're doing is looking for the last solid water, drop of water. There's the timekeeper. It's his job to also make sure that the 15 minutes is from the time that the machines pull into the chocks, which holds the wheels down, and he, he fires the gun, the actual starting point, and then they have to hook in the hose to the side of the machine and then start to clear the air out of the line. This is the Union Number 1 of uh, Westboro. I take that back, Southboro. Here's the foreman, he drops the flag, the nozzle crew uncaps the nozzle, and the men proceed to pump. I might add that the New England State Veteran Firemen's League was formed in 1889 in Boston. It's one of the oldest uh, sports in New England. And here is Hydrant Company number three, Holliston. What kind of a chance do we have, Frank, to win? I would say we have an excellent chance. We have men from the fire department, as well as the local brothers of the brush groups that, had, that helped Hydrant three that day, particular day. Hydrant Company number three has pumped the their best stream was 223 feet, 11 inches, up in Fitzwilliams, New Hampshire. Here's Donnie Young in the foreman. He snaps the flag. There's the nozzle crew, John Dillon, Alan Weir. Tub is in class two. That gives an excellent shot of the actual pumping itself. I might add that the competition at times has been determined by from $200 winner to $300 by a quarter of an inch and sometimes even less. There's Parrot Gates. Of Holliston's charter members from Hydrant 3.
Company number three from Holliston was originally bought from the town of Cambridge. Saw service in Holliston, then was retired to the lower barn on Central Street, where in 1952, members from East Holliston, under the direction at that time of Kimmy Shaw, fire chief, restored the machine, and ever since 1952, it's been an active piece in the New England State Veteran Firemen's League. Since 1952 can be very proud. They have won a total, uh, the total money involved, I don't have the exact figure, but the biggest single year they had was $1,800, which the money in turn is used to transport, register vehicles, any broken parts. <laughs> 